take a look over on the screen here. I'm on the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman. Now, all you need to do is go to tfnn.com, go right there to newsletters tab, come down here to that second row. You're going to see the opening call newsletter by Basil. Now, one of, again, as I said yesterday, I get access to all these newsletters. It's one of the great perks of working for TFNN. One of the things that I really enjoy about the opening call newsletter is one, the daily updates are concise. You know exactly what you need to be looking for and what some potential actions uh, kind of hinge on, but then also the Friday overview. So on Fridays, Basil releases these, kind of goes over everything of the week for the upcoming week as well. And it really just gets you situated and gets your head in the game. Uh, of course, you can access those whenever. Additionally, one of the massive perks of the opening call newsletter is you get access to these subscriber webinars that Basil does, okay? So the most recent one was July 23rd. It's sectors and stocks to focus on in this next phase of the market cycle. He went over, well, sector rotations, see new groups rally. Can the out of favor big losers become winners? These are all fantastic. And of course, you can go through uh, all the ones that he has done. Those are available as well. If this is your first time subscribing, not to worry. There is a 30 day money back guarantee in case for whatever reason it doesn't work out for you, but I'm betting that it will. Basil, how are you doing? How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Um, nice show today and everything. Uh, what are we looking at? So there are a couple of things I wanted to go through. So let me just start off right away. We're looking at a chart of the Dow. On the left is the daily. On, in the middle is the weekly chart. On the right is the monthly. The core, the, the basis of the Chapman Wave methodology started a long time ago when I used to hand chart an engineering paper and a pencil and ruler to find the lowest low and then count each successively higher peak, alphabetize them. Each peak gets a, a higher letter sequentially an uppercase on the way up, lowercase on the way down. But the idea is to get you from a buy signal upgraded to a buy mode, which says that you should go to at least four higher peaks. So first is peak A, second peak one penny above A stars, leg B, that goes to uh, leg, uh, peak B, one penny above B stars, leg C, that becomes a peak C, etc. until we get to D. D is the fourth highest peak. The objective in the Chapman Wave methodology is to try to get you from a starting signal to at least that D, and then other things can happen. It can go E, F, and G, but in the meantime, the most important thing is what happens at D. So we um, are looking at this chart here on the, daily, the, on the daily, and it has this little D. There's a particular technique that I have which said, yep, it could go higher, and now we've gotten to the, the sixth highest peak, which is F. So I don't want to make it difficult. I'm just saying at 42,628, I was anticipating that come early October, based on this weekly chart, based on the time sequence and the chart pattern with another technique that I use, which is this inside track. You see this thin green line and, and pink making a, a little mini channel. Look how it's held back the price every time it's gotten there, except last week it snuck above and now it's gone back in. So, And the monthly chart went to a D and within two bars it made a new higher high. So this is a leg E in, uh, in September. So, so far, those are the, just the basic of the Ch Chapman Wave methodology. But look at this. I use this nine period moving average. I'm going to go to this chart right here, which shows it in greater detail. So, the gray line is whatever price I'm following. Uh, the nine and 14 period moving average is right here, where green is when the price is above the 14, and that's very positive. Pink is when it's not. And look, th at this particular point, the Dow is still with a very strong 914 with the green way above the 14 and the price is way above the 9. And I can go through all the different indexes and you'll see at this particular stage, that's where they are. So what I did last week is we started um, a, just a, a very a small one-to-one -one short position in the S&P, more as insurance, but saying that there's a chance that based on everything I'm looking at, this first week of uh October should be shaky, and we want to be prepared for it. So what we've done is for all our long positions, um, all the positions have been making money. So we've taken little bits off, uh, 15, 20, 30 percent or more gain. And we've lightened up because we, we feel we'll, be having, we'll have another opportunity to add to these positions on a pullback. So that's the status that we're at right now. And as I said, D is where other things can happen. And here we are in leg D. I have to wait the full week. If it doesn't go, the Dow doesn't go above 42,628, that becomes a peak D. And 
unless, and this is the really, this is what we're watching. So today, earlier on, of course, we had that sharp sell-off, but we didn't take out yesterday's low, and we are still macro uh, things that we're looking at in the economy, etc. A strike coming up, but just a lot of things. So mm -hmm. I think this is a little shaky this period. So the nine is still above the fourteen, and I'm anticipating that if the Dow goes below forty-one thousand. 850 closes below 41,850. That'll start this uh, consolidation phase. So within that, there's still sectors that are working. For instance, we have the AI. This is the Global X Artificial Intelligence ETF. Uh, it's, we, we, we've got down just about 30, and here it is at 36.84. We've had it quite quite a while, and it's got a little pattern here that says there should be one little pop to the upside to get to a D. Uh, that was that was made on the 26th of uh, September at 37.52. So 37.53 will start that. And this little pattern where it goes to a C, and I anticipate the D is one of the stocks that we had. The uranium. Uh, this is called the Uranium Energy Corporation, where it may we we were long some time ago and really had really good profits. And then as it was coming down, we got out. But we made this, we got back in just recently and we got this peak C. So I'm anticipating UEC should, it's trading at 650 right now. We were anticipated that the that, that peak C will see a higher high to go to the D because that's the requisite of the buy signal going to a buy mode in the Chapman Wave methodology. And today we went to that D, so we took a little bit off because that's part of money management. So this is going to be also important because. I've been talking for some time about Bitcoin and saying Bitcoin back in uh, back in March gave a sell signal, and it's been in this. This is the downside. That same channel that we were looking at that I call the inside track. In this case, repellent zone. Look how the, uh, Bitcoin is being repelled. But why I said is uh, Robin Hood, H O O D, which is the stock, um, the the. Participants in Robinhood really fluctuate. They go between gold and they go between mm. Bitcoin. So it's on its it's in its own trajectory. So we've been long from just about off the bottom that was made at 1398 back on August the 5th. We got in um, in the 16s, and I said today that we we're going to take a little bit off because it's already in the 24. So today we took a little bit off in the 23s for a very nice gain, and you can see it's looking a little double toppy there, but. Um, Gold has done extremely. We have a gold stock. It's done well, but gold's done very well. And this, this I think, is with the participants that are active in Robinhood. So even though Bitcoin, I think Bitcoin in, in another few weeks, maybe another month or so, I think it might start to get back on the upside. But it's just making lower highs and lower lows. Gold, of course, is the one. So we've been using this as kind of a proxy in a certain sense. Now, what's interesting, you were just talking about STLD. Yes. which is um, right here. This is Steel Dynamics. And this is the, the steel stocks are starting to come on very nicely. Oh, yeah. Uh, if you look at the SLX, which is the Van Eck Vector Steel ETF, doing very well. I just thought I'd introduce that because I'll talk about it more in my show tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the Tiger Technicians Hour. Basil, thank you so much. We'll see you tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern. Thank you very much. Folks, stay right there. We'll be right back with Tim Moore. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a